weirdest, wackiest, most unpolished image of this psycho lady holding this knife between her uh, hands and looking like she's got this psychotic look to her actually got us 200,000 views in just a couple of weeks. Hey everyone, this is Norm Ferrari, aka The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. Today, we're going to be discussing visibility on Amazon, strategies for boosting traffic and sales. We're going to be talking about what are some of the effective strategies for improving organic ranking on Amazon, how should businesses balance their professional photos versus UGC content, and how can sellers use Amazon posts to increase brand awareness and drive traffic to their listings. So welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. All right, today we're going to be discussing visibility on Amazon, strategies for boosting your traffic and sales. And today our guest is the CMO and co-founder of IntelliRank. And as a marketing expert, social media strategist, and e-commerce seller, Larissa has helped numerous clients increase their sales on Amazon, Shopify, and Walmart. She also offers tailored marketing strategies uh, to develop a solid social media strategy that will work with every e-commerce business goal. And today we're going to be discuss or discussing, we're going to be talking to Larissa Herby. Okay. And now let's have a word from our sponsor, which I guess I'm reading the sponsor. I'm catching on to this. All right. This is for seller basics. Hey, Amazon sellers ever faced with account suspensions, ASIN hiccups, or IP headaches? Introducing Seller Basics, your Amazon accounts guardian, with just $99 per month or code norm $89 per month. Seller Basics offers a dedicated team to shield your business from these challenges. Plus, this membership offers free legal consultations from seasoned e commerce attorneys no long-term contracts, and you can cancel with just a month's notice. View Seller Basics as your Amazon Accounts Health Plan, and you can check them out at sellerbasics.com. Now here's the disclaimer. Seller Basics is not an insurer law firm. Consultations come from independent firms. Results may vary, and membership is needed before events leading to the claims. And yes, terms apply. Okay, now let's get back to... Or probably the best thing is just to sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee and enjoy the show. Welcome, Larissa. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, Norm. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's a oh, pleasure to be here. It's, it's, it's my uh, pleasure to have you on. Uh, and by the way, everybody, this is another reason why I just say you got to go out to events. Um, I knew about IntelliRank for years from Shane, Shane Oglo, and we, we, I, I was at the world e-commerce, um, uh, the re world e-commerce forum in Turkey and nice. we were on, um, uh, a boat anyways, there's Larissa and her group, uh, sitting there, I had no idea who she was and uh, she invited me to sit down and all of a sudden I found out that this was in Tellerank. And um, then we just kind of hit it off from there. We've been talking ever since. But uh, yeah, it's just you don't know who you're going to bump into. Uh, and it was just striking up a conversation. It w we would never have really got to talk to each other. Yeah, actually, it was amazing. It was a Bosphor trip, right? Discovering the Bosphor and the Istanbul city. Oh, it yeah. was great. Yeah. <laughs> It, it was just a beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, night that night, just going up and down uh, the river. Or it was at the was it a bay or? Actually, it was uh, the bay, and uh, we cruise around the city, like the European part of the city and the Asian part of the city. It was quite cool. <laughs> it was cool. It was yeah. cool. Getting back to the um, oh, by the way, this is just a, a, another rabbit hole. But the Eastern soccer or football championships were going on that weekend. The cab drivers could not be found. 
I, I, I even know like Amy Weiss. So I, we, you know, a, I, a lot of people know Amy. She was, she couldn't find a cab and she had to walk. She had to walk from the airport and she had to walk her way into the city. I think she got a ride down the road, but she had to walk cause she couldn't find it. I know that night trying to get back took me hours or it took me about an hour and then uh, trying to get a cab to go from the forum, uh, the world e-commerce forum to back to the hotel was frigging nuts. You had to pay a lot more money. Uh, you had to beg the taxi driver to take you. And uh, they they basically just walked off the job, which was yeah. kind of weird. And they also tried to scam somehow uh, the people because they had so much people to to uh, ask for a taxi. It was a crazy night. Yeah, I remember. It, it was crazy. And by the way, if you've never been to Turkey and you've never been to Istanbul, I've been uh, to a couple places uh, on the other side of Turkey, but um, just a just beautiful. It, it really is just a beautiful city. So, uh, and that's another part of when you do some events. All right, let's get into this. Let's yeah. talk about some visibility on Amazon. And why don't we start with what are you talking about? What visibility on Amazon? Um, you know, what can drive you? What can drive traffic and sales? So visibility is like everything in Amazon. We already know that by being sellers on Amazon, we face that. So you can have it with paid ranking, with organic ranking, with external traffic, with social media. So uh, I would like, if possible, to attend all of these topics because I find all of them are really important. But I guess today we are limited uh, with uh, the time. We need to close this in one hour. So. We should start by how to obtain the organic ranking, right? Because this is like the rabbit hole <laughs> in Amazon. Yeah, yeah. Everyone wants it. The paid one is very simple, PPC. It's very expensive in some niches, but yeah. Uh, we should attend maybe the uh, keyword uh, organic ranking and how you should, uh, you should uh, do your strategies uh, for your Amazon listing in order to obtain better visibility from organic ranking. Yeah, uh, as you said, at IntelliRank, we helped uh, in the last two years more than 2,000 listings to be uh, ranked on top of the keywords, the main important keywords uh, in their niches. And we are doing that by combining a mix of strategies. Uh, of course, when it comes to organic ranking, we always uh, tell all the sellers that we worked with to have like uh, good quality uh, photos, to have like a very good uh, pricing strategy in place, to have reviews because it's important to be very competitive when it comes to the reviews. And uh, here we have like a very good uh, tactic on how to obtain more reviews and to be TOS compliant. This is the sensitive topic to obtain reviews and to be uh, TOS compliant. So. What we are encouraging uh, sellers to do is to enroll into Vine. Vine is the only way to uh, get a trusted and reliable uh, source of reviews for the listing, but uh, to uh, create, uh, for example, multiple variations for the same product and create an ASIN for each variation. I don't know if uh, you are familiar with the, this tactic, but it works really good when you are launching a product, for example, a yoga mat, you can have three color variations like red, green, blue. You enroll an, a separate parent ASIN for each variation. You enroll each ASIN into Vine. You get up to 30 reviews. After the Vine uh, is uh, completed, you merge the three color variation under the same parent and you have up to 90 reviews for your newly launched product. This is a very good tactic to have like 90 uh, reviews from, uh, from, uh, from the beginning. Yeah. It's very and cheap. It's very cheap too. It, it's very cheap. Uh, and it's the only source reliable uh, in order not to be, you're you know, breaking somehow the rules uh, in getting reviews because this is a very bad thing. And if you have the reviews, you have the images and the pricing strategy, you need sales because Amazon is 
you know, uh, giving you uh, the better uh, ranking position and better visibility organically if you create sales. Yeah. And when it comes to creating sales and sales velocity, our uh, favorite solution uh, is through product testing campaigns. I know that you are familiar with the product testing concept. It's like the mystery shopper uh, program. You get like people to complete a survey, to respond a set of standard question about your product. And in this process, you get uh, like uh, uh, sales momentum uh, and uh, you send the right signals to Amazon that people are buying your product. And in the same time, you get the most important factor, the customer data. You can later on improve your listing, optimizing uh, the listing with uh, the responses from, from the survey uh, results. It's, uh, it's like uh, mine gold for sellers. You can discover maybe faulty parts of your products, what is missing, uh, and yeah, you you get in touch with real people that will use your product, and uh, this is something works uh, works really good. It's for all marketplaces can be applicable, and uh, yeah, it's one source of driving traffic to your listing. And uh, yeah, uh, we are doing that uh, through product testing campaigns. Uh, we are having like a very good strategy in place before starting a campaign. We are doing a keyword research. We are trying to optimize the listing with a, a good SEO. Uh, we are trying to see what are the most important keywords, what are the keywords uh, uh, in your competitors' listings they are selling for. We are trying to see if a keyword is seasonal or not. So this is what we are uh, we are applying for for the listing in order to create visibility. This is the stage one. And in stage two, we recommend social media. We recommend social media for user generated content. Like uh, get. So just before we go to stage two, can we yeah. go back to um, the surveys? So you've got, um, a, there, actually, actually, I have two questions. First of yes. all, based on the keyword, based on whether it's a primary or long tail, uh, there's going to be a different amount of recommendations. Mm -hmm. So I've worked with a lot of survey companies uh, in the past, and I've worked with a lot of clients who they get the numbers back. So let's say they recommend uh, probably 50 units, just an example, to have um, the proper sales velocity and to get the proper information back from the surveyors. But the brand owner says, eh, I only want 10. That's really throwing your money away, isn't it? Because it doesn't give you enough sales velocity. Yeah, this is this is why I, I explained that it's really important to have like a very good keyword research beforehand and a good strategy based on that keyword research. We are having now, it's not like back in, I don't know, four years ago, we are having all the tools, we are having all the numbers. So we have the estimation for each keyword how much is your competitor selling on that specific keyword? How much uh, you should also sell in order to overcome that number and be better than your competitors, right? So we are not going with 50% uh, or 60% out of that number. We recommend to fully try to uh, do more than the number, maybe one, two sales, even more than uh, the recommended number, because otherwise you won't say, have results. Maybe yeah. your competitor is also trying to drive traffic. Maybe your competitor is having an aggressive social media strategy. Maybe he's running ads. Maybe he is also doing uh, product testing campaigns and you won't see results. But uh, for sure, this kind of strategy needs a bit of research, like uh, a bit of time in order to see exact how you plan those, uh, those campaigns, for how long, uh, how many product testers you need. But uh, these kind of details is, uh, are uh, very specific to every listing and uh, based on an audit, yeah. Okay, and one other question uh, about these, this strategy. And that's your pricing optimization. So when, let's say those 50 units, uh, again, I'm going to go back to a brand that, uh, brands that we've worked with, they want to cut, <laughs> excuse me, 
that snuck up on me. Uh, they want to cut their price by 50% or more because they don't want to pay the price. Okay. Because these, if you, in case you don't know surveys or the, the way that th surveys are done, they go out, the surveyor goes out and buys your product and you pay a specific price uh, to that person. So you're, uh, you're giving them a, an amount. There's a lot of different prices. There's a variation. So it's price plus the amount. Does it hurt if you go, let's say your product is $30 and you cut it to $15. Um, it, does that hurt the sales velocity? Does that hurt your product in any way when you try to bring the price back up to 30 or should you keep it at 30, take it as a marketing hit and just get the better result? This question is very, very good. So we recommend to go with the full price during the, the product testing campaign. Why? Because at the end, Amazon wants more money. So the product that is, that is bringing more money to the Amazon platform will get better visibility. It's not all also, it's, it is about sales, but at the end, it's about the amount of money your listing is creating for the Amazon platform. So if you are trying to cut the price, maybe add a discount or a coupon, the sales velocity created won't create the same uh, good effect as if you were to have like the full price. We recommend to go with the full price. Uh, assume that uh, this kind of campaign is a marketing strategy. It will bring you more sales at the end. It will bring you visibility. It's an investment, but don't try to uh, be cheaper and create uh, like, uh, you know, a, a strategy that uh, is uh, less costly, but not very effective. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I think we've got, we've covered stage one. Now let's go over to stage two. Yeah. Stage two, it's UGC. And this is the next hit in Amazon. Let's call it like, uh, you know, the new social media inside Amazon. I'm very passionate about it because I started, uh, you know, as an Amazon seller, I had problems with my inventory level and with my PPC campaign. So I needed to back in the times to go on social media and to bring people from social media to buy my product and rank my own product back in the times. And now I see that Amazon is trying to create an entire social media inside Amazon and is doing that by Inspire. I don't know if you're familiar with Amazon sure. Inspire, the new TikTok shop experience. They are having Amazon posts. They are having videos. They are having Amazon influencers. So slowly they're turning like all the buyers into social media inside Amazon while also shopping somehow. So UGC is part of the social media from, from the scratch. People are on social media to find the right emotion, to connect with the right uh, kind of people, to uh, feel like appreciated, to buy something. If they buy something on social media, they buy from the people they trust. So user-generated content like authentic photos and videos are now a must for the Amazon listing. It's not enough to have like very good quality uh, photos uh, made in a studio for your product because the buyers will land on your listing and they don't feel like they want to buy from you because they don't feel like the right emotion from a listing created only with photos from a studio, from a professional studio. Um, and this kind of materials. So now we are having all the waves, uh, all the ways to leverage the UGC on a listing. You can upload photos, uh, you can upload videos, you can create an EB EBC and an A, a plus with the, the photos from the UGC, and you can create like a sense of community and people recommending your product, like actual people and users recommending your product directly on your listing. And more than that, you can leverage UGC inside Amazon Post. And this is uh, something that we are uh, applying for multiple clients, for our own brands as well. So 
create a strategy and try to post daily, exactly like you create a strategy on social media. You can create a strategy using the UGC inside advertising console using Amazon posts. Yeah. Okay. And how have you seen posts change over the last couple of years and where is it going? So uh, they started uh, like only with images. You can, uh, in the past, you could uh, have used only images and now they are slowly implementing as well videos as Amazon Post. So somehow they're trying to uh, cover the entire range of uh, content and uh, also Amazon Inspire, the, the application uh, is getting content from Amazon Post and reposting it in Amazon Inspire. They moved Amazon Post from a separate platform to the advertising console. So it's kind of staying and also is getting like more real estate in terms of visibility. Uh, I don't uh, believe it's uh, going to be, you know, waived or uh, at a certain point they renounce at it. They invest more and more and from beta slowly will turn like in a full uh, uh, tested uh, tool and everyone should uh, should leverage it somehow. Yeah. Okay. And can you explain just in case, because this is another form of user generated content uh, insight. Uh, what is it? Um, how can a seller benefit from it? Uh, yeah, just just go through the mm -hmm. all of Insight for us, please. So currently, Amazon Post uh, is available only in the US and only for those who are uh, having like Amazon brand uh, registry and a storefront with a live brand profile. And uh, this is the minus. If you are selling in the UK, Canada and other marketplaces, you cannot use Amazon Post. But for those in the Amazon US with a brand uh, registered uh, seller account and with a brand profile that is live, uh, it's very simple. Uh, you just uh, enroll to the post. You are going to advertising console and you need like the actual post in order to be uploaded and scheduled. Uh, so they are having the platform fully optimized. If you create like a, a content calendar, uh, exactly like you do on social media, for example, you create all the content for 30 days. Uh, it's perfect you need like one hour to upload all the content you need like photos videos if uh, if you are eligible for videos but if not only photos and a caption dedicated for every post you upload schedule it once per day at least once per day the more you post the more chances you have for visibility you upload you schedule the post and you just need to monitor them after because it can uh, you know it can be uh, the case they got rejected or you have some errors with them and you need to re-upload them later on. But it's a very simple process. It can be externalized very easily. Or if you want, you can have like a VA inside your team to do that. Uh, we created also like, by the way, uh, an Amazon post course about how to create a strategy, how to create a content calendar. And one of the prizes for, for today is about, uh, is about this, uh, this uh, Amazon post course that we created. We are offering like uh, one prize for one winner, uh, the, the course. Oh, you, you let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> yeah, actually. I don't okay. know if I... Nope. And, and that's actually perfect timing because it is the bottom of the hour and we have some, I think we have some new viewers here too. So just in case, uh, this is the first time listening to the podcast. Uh, we have something uh, unique at the top of the podcast, top of the hour, and that's called the wheel of Kelsey. And that's where a, a guest gives away a product or a, pro um, uh, a prize at the top of the hour. So today's prize is what? It's a free Amazon course about Amazon posts specifically. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. And I've back when posts came out, I was a big fan of it and I have been and I've posted about it and I've written about it. And I still don't think, at least from the clients that come to us, I don't see a lot of people utilizing it properly or effectively. 
And um, I, I, I'm just going to give one example. I use this example all the time. Uh, and that gets into the monitor, monitoring side of posts. But uh, we used a variety of different uh, content for this one company. And the weirdest, wackiest, most unpolished image of this psycho lady holding this knife between her uh, hands and looking like she's got this psychotic look to her actually got us 200,000 views in just a couple of weeks. And I would never put it, I just thought it would be funny to put it up to see. And actually that became one of the best, most highly engaged uh, photos that we had up there. You never know what it's gonna be. But those 200,000, you could see, you, you can't see sales, but you can see the click-throughs over to the page. And at least back then, it took four to five clicks to get to the page. And if you do that, you only know that people who want to see your product are actually going to click through to see your page. So the sales that have come out of there, I don't know how many sales he, uh, he received, because of just what he's been posting on posts, but it is remarkable. I know, um, <laughs> I know uh, Sumner Hobart put a, a, a video out and he tracked it and he saw his, uh, his conversion rate go up and uh, his sales go up uh, just because of posts. So I know this is a long winded thing mm -hmm. about Wheel of Kelsey, but post the course that, that you have, Larissa, there's, I don't know of any other course out there on posts. So I think it's quite valuable. Actually, uh, the, the sale price for the course is $249 as of now. Uh, we created this course to be very affordable to everyone that uh, is selling on Amazon and is not uh, actually realizing or, no, or knowing the potential of Amazon posts. You know, with Amazon posts, it's kind of, one of the two ways we can access Amazon Inspire. As sellers, you can access, you can access uh, Amazon Inspire in two ways. Working with influencers on Amazon, which can be expensive because they, they, they charge a fee for that and you don't reach out maybe to the right influencer always. And through Amazon Post. These are the two ways you can access Amazon Inspire. So it's it's one of the ways you prepare for the future because you need to leverage this social media inside Amazon because actually it's one of the the social media ways to to promote your product. And uh, yeah, I believe the secret in Amazon post uh, content creation is to leverage the right uh, UGC mm -hmm. to 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 send to the potential buyer that sense of authenticity to feel like okay a real person is using this product is not uh, a marketing agency that is trying to sell me something or or a stock photo yeah yeah and those are the worst by the way guys stock photos are it's the worst way to go people want to see happy smiling people solving a problem using the product yeah the product in action is is yeah. the secret for amazon post and it's it is very simple to create like 30 posts from two collaborations you just need two collaboration in order to cover one month of posts you well, have like two ugc content creators to create six photos each for you with the product in action you just remove the background you can use, use that uh, Canva tool that is for yeah. free. Actually, you remove the, the background. You just change the background with something that uh, works better for, for your product. And you can have like 20 or 15 uh, posts uh, from yeah, one or picture. Put it into e-content. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> another way of doing it. But the way that we do it, uh, and I know we're still talking about the prize. And by the way, while I'm talking about this, hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. That's why if this, you're new to this, you're seeing a bunch of hashtag Wheel of Kelsey's in there. That's so you can enter for the prize. If you tag two people, you get a second entry. So that's going to be uh, a little bit later on. Um, but wh where was I going with this? Oh, yeah. The, the way that we generate just a crazy amount of content is when we go out and we'll go to um, influencers and then we'll ask them specifically for certain types of content. 
and then they send us a video and then in the video we take screen captures and we take snippets and we like it's just a little bit of everything a little bit of mixing up mm. and you get endless an endless amount of content that you can use with very little uh with with just very little cost so it's something that uh not a lot of people do you don't have to just use the full video you know you, you can cut it up you can you can put it into ecom tent or into uh 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 uh, pictory for example you know if it's video and you could just repurpose the heck out of it so these are all things that you can do very inexpensive to do and it's user generated content at its best so hashtag wheel of kelsey's tag two people you get a second entry to get a chance to uh win the course that 249 dollar course which uh, it's priceless because not a lot of people are doing this. They're still not doing it and I don't get it. So, yeah. uh, all right, so that's that. Now I gotta talk about Start, Scale, Exit, Repeat. So this is a book that my buddy wrote, uh, Colin Campbell, Colin C. Campbell, if you're listening. Uh, and this took 10 years to write. This is not an AI book. This is a 10 year life experience entrepreneurial journey by my buddy start scale exit repeat he's had tough times he's had great times he's interviewed over 200 people in this book and what i love about it is he breaks down each step start scale exit and repeat into four different areas and then there's subsections it actually is more like a um, a reference book for any level of entrepreneur Plus it's broken down. He's got graphs. He's got diagrams of exactly what he did during his, uh, entrepreneurial journey of over, I think well over 30 years. So start scale exit repeat. It's on Amazon. You can get it a uh, soft cop, uh, soft cover, hard cover and, uh, Kindle. It's also available on audible. And he's also going to be a BDSS by the way. Okay. Now we're back. There you go. Uh, let's see, where can we go from here? I, I want to stay on the subject of UGC. And I, I talked about our strategy. Do you have any other strategies that you have for UGC for Amazon? Yeah, actually, uh, it's uh, one of the oldest strategy, but it's very, very effective to have like a social media presence. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, to try to drive as much traffic as possible from social media platforms, depending on your product. If you are selling a product, for example, that is very okay to have a presence on TikTok and it's dedicated for a certain age range and so on, uh, I recommend TikTok. If you have like a product for a general audience, Instagram. Pinterest, Facebook, try to cover as many social media channels as possible, try to post constantly and reuse uh, the UGC from social media to Amazon, from Amazon, uh, if you already have from Amazon post uh, and you collaborated with some influencers, try to create a content calendar and a strategy for your social media, try to interact and create a community. So you have constant UGC, you uh, constantly optimize your listing with new UGC content and make sure that uh, your listing looks as authentic as possible. You need to create and send to the right audience that sense of community. They want to belong to your community. They want to buy your product because your product is solving a problem and that community is uh, a trusted vote for you. Yeah. 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 Uh I think that's really important, building up that community. And you have to know a lot about where your audience or who your audience is, because if it's targeting, uh, let's say a demographic that's going to be on Pinterest, I'd be spending time on Pinterest or like you said, TikTok, or, you know, if you're an old fogey like me, maybe on Facebook, uh, but, mm -hmm. but. I want to, I just want to address Pinterest, for example, Pinterest is one of the hottest social media platforms out there. 
and it's not utilized. I, I don't think it's not utilized uh, enough. I know we had uh, Lauren Petrullo on, and she's like the queen of Pinterest, and uh, she loves it. And we, it's like when I was talking about press releases or uh, Google Business Profile, you talk about it, but people don't take action to do it. And it just boggles me that, you know, boggles my mind what's left of it, why people don't do it if it can generate so much extra sales. I believe the, the main problem here is they don't know how to start it, that they believe that it's very time consuming or very expensive when in fact now with the AI, you have all the captions already made with AI. You can create the captions, like the best captions out there. You can do your hashtag research with the AI. You can use Canva to create your content calendar. So you don't actually need someone like a full-time job to, to spend like eight hours per day for your social media. Or you can hire an agency. We are also doing that at IntelliRank. We can create a social media presence. But usually people are very afraid that it's taking a lot of time and they prefer to spend a lot of money on PPC. They prefer to test other kind of strategies. I, I don't want to say that PPC is bad. It's mandatory actually, but you need something extra. You need to bring in more strategies for uh, driving sales because if you rely only on PPC during peak season, you will be just broke <laughs> mm -hmm. because everyone is bidding a lot so you need to you need to prepare and you need to leverage the the UGC as as best as possible yeah and this is where stage one where you're going to the surveyors and the information that they're providing and then if you're doing competitive analysis and you see uh, you compare the good and bad reviews from your competitors you can take that and you you can um, emphasize this with your influencers. So this is where all that time that you take to understand your competition, your audience, uh, the surveyors, all comes together and you can start targeting those. So you can see uh, how you could solve the pain points or you can address what your competitors aren't addressing and get ahead of the game. And like you said, it's so easy right now to do this sort of thing uh, with within Canva or with other apps, um, just make sure <laughs> that when you're doing it, you're just not, uh, we say this almost every podcast now, you're not just writing a simple prompt. Get specific. There's tons of courses out there right now, tons of information about how you can do this properly. I'll say it again. I said it a thousand times. Uh, if you're interested in understanding this, Digital Marketer has a great tutorial on a bunch of different courses on this, specifically on AI. And Mark Degrassi, if Kelsey, if you could put that there, um, he started his branding course again, and it just started last week. I get nothing from this. All I know is I've taken the courses. I'm on faculty over at Digital Marketer, and I know the quality of the courses that they have. Uh, also, uh, again, talking with you about your course, you got to take a bit of time and continuously learn about this or you're going to be left behind. So AI is nothing to just, oh, I can do this. No, you can't. Uh, oh, it looks so great. No, it sucks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you've seen that, but you know when somebody sends you somebody, like somebody who knows nothing about AI is sending you something. And one other thing I want to say, and this is so important about uh, when you're either hiring somebody in social media or if you have an uh, looking for an agency, there's three things in social media that you need other than your brand consistency. You need to have great copy, great creative and great engagement. And you can get usually it's hard to find somebody to do one of those things, but there is a chance that you get somebody to do two out of those three things. They'll never do three. So an agency can cover that off and you want to ask about that. And that's actually another question. Uh, I wasn't planning on asking you this, but what are some questions you can ask an agency to make sure that they don't suck? Uh, yeah. 
you can ask for some success or st study cases in order to see how they are working on the creative part. That's really important. But usually the agency should ask you like the proper question and you you will realize if that agency is made like makes things really good or not based on the quality of the questions they are asking for example they need to ask you about you know your colors your font your mission your client avatar what kind of emotions you want to to uh, make sure that the audience is perceiving for, from your uh, profile you need to, to ask about uh, your competitors profiles of your competitors uh, profiles that you follow and you want to be even better than them uh, you need to ask about your future plans in regards to other projects or uh, maybe uh, products that you want to add in uh, in your brand all kind of uh, these kind of questions are really, really important for an agency in order to understand your client avatar, your mission, your brand, and to create the the right uh, captions, the right uh, photos. And yeah, you should pre-approve all the content for one month at least prior. You should always be like very, very uh exigent and professional with the content you approve it's not like you externalize all the work to an agency and they are posting and scheduling everything on your behalf you still need to check if that message and uh, that kind of photo is aligned with your mission vision and your branding yeah that's that's so important to make sure that it is aligned with your branding um okay other than video are there any other new features to post either in the um, on the record side or the uh, reporting side or any of the other features? Um, I was thinking now maybe uh, to try to do not reuse the content very very often the same content because now with the ai that amazon is using they they can see if for example you just remove the background for one picture and reposted mm. it three times so maybe you need to change the angle of the picture you need to add something on the picture just so the ai can uh, can see it's the same the same uh, does removing content. the metadata uh, does that help yeah, it can be. It can okay. be as well. And then just re-adding something different. Yeah, try to change the angle of the picture or yeah. add some text on it, even though the, the text can be rejected, but it's very effective for the buyer perspective because they tend to spend like two seconds. And if you have text, it's like better for them to understand what's the picture about. Yeah. And do you have any stats on, you know, how posts can increase uh, awareness or drive additional traffic to listings? Yes, of course. We are having a full, a full uh, set of uh, results based on that. We reach out with multiple posts uh, as in terms of results with more than uh, 100,000 views. You cannot measure the actual sales, but you can uh, measure the views. You can measure the clicks. You can measure the followers for your brand because you are having a brand profile in Amazon. And it's exactly like on social media that turns into followers for your brand. So uh, they are more likely to see your next post. And every post is like a new chance for visibility. And this is great. For example, if you are posting in November uh, and you just stopped posting, those posts are still counting new views even in April for your brand. And that's kind of amazing. It's like having a PPC campaign ongoing, you know. Well, followers, it's even bigger because one of the things that you can do with experiments is you can get the last 20 percent of your it'll target the last 20 percent of the people your hottest um uh repeat buyers but the other thing it does is it targets um followers so your followers will get notified for any of the promotions that you're doing 
And if you've got a thousand followers and you're bringing out a new brand or something new or a special, what a great way to get instant access to your, uh, your Amazon customers. Yeah. Yeah, actually, it's it's having unlimited uh, kind of ways to increase visibility through Amazon posts. You are also displayed on your competitors listing in the search right, term results. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So I know we're getting down to we got about 10 minutes left, but uh, and we'll get right into questions. And by the way, we've got a question right now from Rad. If you do have any questions about any form of UGC or uh, Amazon posts, let us know. We got a couple minutes and we'll get to that question. But I want to know about posts, uh, uh, about any of the visibility um, areas that we've been talking about today. Like what are some of the big mistakes Amazon sellers are using with either UGC or posts? Yeah. One of the biggest mistake, they are collaborating with UGC content creators. They are providing with the raw material and they don't know what to do with it. <laughs> they mm. are just getting the content, maybe upload one video or two videos, one picture, two pictures on the listing. And that's kind of it. You constantly need to work with content creators. You constantly need to A-B test and optimize your listing. You need to post daily if possible, multiple times per day. So it's not one time and you stop and you just say, oh, it doesn't work. It's exactly like on social media. It needs time to build a community. It needs time to increase your visibility. Every new post is a new chance. Every new content creator is bringing new content for you. So you can merge from multiple content creators and create like a video, like a carousel video or like a reel, you know. You need to invest like creativity and time in order to diverse somehow the content and always optimize and A-B test. You're not going to see, I just thought about this when you're talking, on posts, you don't automatically see this. But one of the best things that I love about um, Amazon posts, not a lot of people are talking about, is the second click. And the second click, you get to see something and it's categories. And you see all the different categories that Amazon thinks that this post is relevant to. And I've always, I've picked up like the, the knife, for example, I picked up a few different categories and I saw, oh, we're not even targeting these categories. We're not targeting these keywords. And all of us, they're telling you right there, you click on it. And if you haven't done this, just go to post, click on it once, and you'll see the post drop down. It'll be a bit bigger. So it's more of just the image. If you click the uh, logo up top, you'll go to the company, all the company's brand feed. But if you click the image itself, it'll just go to multiple um, uh, competitors. Like you were saying, these are just competitors that show up. And within that, the second click allows you to see all the categories. And it, that can be really useful when you're doing your um, your marketing as well. Yeah, that's that's a great insight, actually. <laughs> so, uh, and I think I think that's it. Uh, let's get to the questions, and then we'll go to the sponsor. Okay. So, first one is from Rad. Uh, I want to clarify if it's possible to use AI generated realistic images and videos to promote products on Amazon. I, I don't see a problem with that. Me neither, but you need to make sure that it's as authentic as possible and send the right signal, you know, like looks like an authentic person using a, the product. It's not poorly made <laughs> to call it like that. Yeah. Yeah. And one, one problem, and I think the film, I read about this um, when Polar Express first came out, humans weren't um, humans weren't used to that type of um, animation and the person uh, it wasn't symmetric right and that threw it off now people are more used to it so the problem we have with AI if it's not symmetric and it looks off people will think your brands off so you have to make sure it's a good image 
uh, and it's well balanced. Uh, if it doesn't look right, it just smells funny. Yeah, and don't use it better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, and for Marina, our last question. Uh, can I use pictures that customers posted in the reviews uh, for posts? I usually recommend to have the permission of the user yeah. uh, or or the content creator in order to, to use the material. You know, that kind of uh, posts maybe are not approved or I don't know. You don't have permission to use content just posted on Amazon. It's not your lawsuit. property. Yeah. Yeah. The hundred uh, percent, the content, the user generated content could be used by, uh, through the influencer. Okay. Or the content creator, uh, you have to get permission. It's not maybe it's have to get permission. And where are you getting permission to post to? Is it on Amazon? Is it on YouTube? You have to get, and it might cost you a bit more. It might cost you a couple hundred bucks more, depending on the influencer, but it's well worth it because a lawsuit will cost you a lot more. And exactly what you said, I kind of cringe when you say reviewers, you know, if photos, I, you got to reach out, you got to have permission. Yeah. For example, we are working with uh, a lot, a lot of content creators from various categories and niches, but with all of them, we have an agreement, like they are allowing us and sending us the material in order to reuse it for marketing purpose. So make sure you have uh, the word marketing purpose all over the place. It's not mm -hmm. only on Amazon, not only on social media, because you want to reuse it as per your interest. Yeah. Larissa, are you working with the hottest content creator known to man right now, Kelsey Farrar? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> just, just wondering, you know, I know he's hard to get, but, uh, you know, and he, I don't know, he's pretty pricey too, but. Uh, <laughs> not yet, not, not yet, yet, but uh, I'm, okay. I will think about it and yeah, why not? Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> Want more great information? Don't forget to subscribe by clicking here. Also, if you want to check out our latest podcast, click over here. Entrepreneur, entrepreneur, entrepreneur.